I'm Alex Dykes, and this is the all-new for 2013 Volkswagen Beetle Convertible. Now, new for 2013, in addition to the more manly looks on the front end and the back end of the Beetle Convertible, we also get various trim lines. And our particular model here is a 70s trim line, sort of paying homage to certain Beetle styles and design cues from the 70s. We get this brown paint, we get chrome mirror caps, and of course we get these unique wheels. There's also a 60s model available, which comes in a periwinkle paint scheme and uh, has two-tone blue and white leather interior. And there's, of course, a 50s model as well, which gets uh, sort of black and, and uh, chrome hubcap style wheels, and of course gets a black paint job, paying homage to the all-black Beetles when they started. <laughs> The Beetle still has the cutesy smiley face hood as well as these bubbly front fenders, but they have done some things to try and butch up the front a little bit for 2013. Most notably, we have these ovaloid headlamps instead of the round modules as before, and there's more black going on inside the headlamp modules. In addition, the bumper has been chiseled to be a little bit more square in profile, and of course we get the Volkswagen corporate grille grafted into the bumper down here. It's difficult to redesign retro, so the 2013 Beetle doesn't really depart much from the style formula that Beetles have used in the past. We of course still get the bubbly rear fender here, but we have a brand new tail lamp arrangement. These are a bit more masculine with more angles to them. And of course we get an all new rear bumper as well that has the same angles and lines that match the front bumper. We still have the typical Volkswagen Beetle hatch here for the trunk opening. And of course the Beetle's top still collapses on top of the rear deck rather than going into the trunk. The rack top in the Beetle is of course a fully electric retractable top, but instead of descending into an area in the trunk, this occupies an area that's devoted solely towards top storage. So when the top is up in the Beetle, you can't use any of this space that the top is occupying in the vehicle. And when the top is down, it of course collapses in there. That means that the trunk in the Beetle stays the same size whether the top is up or down. Now this area behind the rear seats is where they've located their rollover protection system and little bars will pop up from these hatches if your Beetle should end up on its back. Maintaining the classic look of the Beetle is this manually installable top boot which snaps in <clears throat> as you can see here on the side of the Beetle and then you walk around and uh, clip it on over here. And then you tuck these parts under the roof there. And then you tuck this under the roof here. And this one goes under here. And finally, the back part of the boot goes behind the rear seats. Then you pull it around to make sure that there are no strange seams or funky bunchiness going on here. And there you can see that the boot is now in place. Of course, you've probably noticed a problem with that in, in that initially it took us some time to install the boot in the vehicle in the first place, but there's also another problem. So if it starts raining or you just decide you don't want your top down anymore, then you've got to come back, you've got to unclip it. Now it's off the car. Then you have to try and figure out where you're going to put it. That's the next problem. So you can roll it up like this, but now you have to put it somewhere. If you open the trunk, it's not a very big trunk. So putting this in the trunk takes up at least half the trunk. Now it is off now, and now you have to hop back in the car, and now you can put the power top back up. The Beetle mix is modern with retro, so of course we get a corporate Volkswagen steering wheel that tilts and telescopes, uh, but we mix that with body color matching trim bits here on the steering wheel. We of course get a round airbag cover and a flat bottom on this particular wheel. The dashboard is full of hard plastics. In fact, there, there really are very few soft plastics to find in this cabin. They're really pretty much limited to the armrests on the left and on the right of the driver. Uh, everything else in this cabin has a fairly uh, hard plastic feel to them. They are textured a little bit better than previous generations of the Beetle, but there's really no disguising that the Beetle is still an economy car based vehicle. Now over here in the dash, we get the optional five inch navigation system in our particular Beetle. 
And further over the dashboard, we have the dual glove boxes. These are our standard in all Beetle models. And of course, more body color matching paint. It's both on the doors and on the dashboard here. Now, the one thing I should point out on this particular Beetle is that unlike previous generations of the Beetle and unlike the Chrysler PT Cruiser, uh, these plastics don't seem to scratch as easily. So if you're uh, an owner of a PT Cruiser, you've probably noticed that over time your dashboard has sort of gotten a brushed effect. And that doesn't seem to have happened in this particular vehicle. And our particular tester has about 6,000 miles on it already with, uh, you know, press you know, jamming their fingers everywhere and even scratching the dashboard like this, you can see that there aren't any fine scratches in the paint. That's an excellent thing to note. In terms of creature comforts, Volkswagen is once again mixing modern with retro. We get heated front seats, but we don't get automatic climate control. We do, however, have keyless go in this particular vehicle, but we don't have power seats. These are manual both for the driver and the passenger. And the recline mechanism in this seat, for some reason, is a knob, which I find a little bit more difficult to use. We do get adjustable lumbar support, however, for both the driver and the front passenger. The rear seats in the Beetle are small. Now, I'm six feet tall. This front seat is adjusted more or less comfortably for me as six feet tall. I would like it a little bit further back to drive for long distances. But you can see you can fit two adult passengers in the rear. Now, it is fairly narrow back here, and that's thanks to those bubbly rear fenders, <clears throat> which really cut down on the interior space in the rear. And there's, of course, no middle seat in the Beetle. On the bright side, there is a decent amount of headroom because of the side profile of the Beetle and that sort of bubbly top. Now, this front passenger seat is adjusted for someone at six feet five tall, and they fit in the vehicle fairly easily, thanks again to that bubbly profile of the Beetle. But as you can see, if you wanted to sit behind this person, you'd have to be legless or an infant. A fairly unique feature about the VW convertible are these folding rear seat backs. Now, they don't fold completely flat with the trunk, and this cargo hatch is still a bit small, and it's, of course, centered, meaning it'd be difficult to fit longer items in the vehicle, but it does have one, and that's fairly rare for convertibles. Speaking of trunks, this means that it is now time for our exclusive trunk comfort index. Now, looking at the trunk here, you can see this is the largest roller bag you can carry in a domestic flight. Obviously, the two of us aren't going to fit in there together, so got to take that out. This is that boot that we were just talking about. That's got to come out as well. And uh, this little dealie right here is the tray that holds the air deflector. That's that little windbreak that you can install on the rear seats to keep you from getting buffeted around. That one's got to go as well. And uh, what we're left with is a somewhat reasonably sized trunk for a convertible. This is a little bit bigger than something like a Mercedes SLK, but it's definitely going to be a tight squeeze. Let's see how we fit. Oh, that's awful. Oh my. Well, it is possible to get in the trunk of the Beetle convertible, but this guy only scores two out of a possible 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index. And that's because this trunk is really tiny and I'm not sure if I can walk again once I get out of it. There are three different engine options available in the Beetle for 2013. Things start out with this base 2.5 liter five cylinder engine, produces about 170 horsepower, and it's the only engine available in the 70s edition Beetle convertible. This engine is mated only to a traditional six speed automatic, sending power, of course, to the front wheels. There's also a two liter turbo engine available that produces about 200 horsepower, and it sends power to the front wheels via either your choice of a manual six speed transmission or a six speed dual clutch automatic. There's also, for this year, a 140 horsepower 2 liter turbo diesel available, produces about 140 horsepower, and has the same transmission options as that 2 liter turbo. Our particular Beetle has been equipped with the optional 5 inch touchscreen navigation system. This unit is fairly easy to use, but it is also one of Volkswagen's most basic units available. We, of course, have navigation over here. This interface is fairly low resolution, but should be familiar to anybody that's used uh, an aftermarket nav system. Uh, the responses are a little bit slower than I would like in this particular system, and it doesn't display XM nav traffic or traffic via a data service. Over here on the band button, we have direct access to XM satellite radio as well as AM and FM. On the media tab, you can access your Bluetooth audio device, which is what we have paired right now. There's also a cabled USB or iPhone iPod interface. Over here on the phone button, you can see we have our stereotypical Bluetooth phone interface with all the usual buttons and features. The system is fairly easy to use, but there is one serious omission. 
There are no voice commands for directing tunes from your USB, uh, your iDevice, or your other media device in this particular system, like you would find in cars from the competition like Toyota, Honda, General Motors, Ford, etc. Volkswagen tells us that 40% of Beatles will come equipped with the Fender audio system. Now that audio system does have some serious volume to it, it includes nine speakers and a subwoofer, although I personally found the, uh, the balance in that particular system a little bit out of whack. I found that it was a little bit too high on the treble and a little bit too high on the bass, but that's just a personal preference. Convertibles are about open air motoring, not performance and handling. This convertible top not only adds weight and complexity to the car, thereby reducing your performance, but it also means that the chassis in this particular car is not as stiff as the Beetle with the regular hard top. And that's very obvious out here on the roads of Northern California where they're not really paved all that well. And so it kind of feels like the front end and the back end of the car are two different cars maybe attached like a trailer. You know, so the car is kind of twisting and wobbling out on the road. Now this isn't as bad, of course, as you know, something like a Chrysler LeBaron or a Chrysler Sebring convertible. It doesn't feel like a wet noodle out on the road, but it doesn't feel as stiff and as well put together as the regular Beetle with the regular hardtop. And that's just the way convertibles are. You know, you still have a little bit of squeaking from where this rooftop meets the, uh, the, the windshield frame. You, of course, have a little bit of squeaking around the window sills as well in this car. Thanks to that added weight, it took 9.2 seconds for our Beetle convertible to hit 60 miles an hour. That is about a second to a second and a half slower than the 2.0T model of the Beetle convertible, but about a half second faster than the 140 horsepower diesel. So you're no doubt asking yourself, what does the Beetle convertible have to compensate for the fact that it doesn't handle quite as well and doesn't accelerate quite as well as the regular convertible? Well, it's obviously that convertible top. And the nice feature is we're traveling 31 miles an hour now, and this top still operates which is a, probably the fastest that I've ever been in a convertible and had its roof still work. That means that if you've been in a convertible before and you've gotten stuck at a stoplight and you wanna lower your top but then the light turns green and people are behind you honking, that doesn't really happen in the Beetle convertible because you can actually start moving and go up to about 31 miles an hour or so and still have that top power down. That's of course because this top doesn't stow in the trunk. So you don't have to have the trunk lid open and then have the top store in there and then have it close again. It means this top is a little bit faster than some of those other convertibles and it means it can operate at those higher speeds. The Beetle isn't terribly quiet out on the road, top up or top down, but we do have this wind deflector here, which can be collapsed, but I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but it does add a decent amount more buffeting from the rear. So it is a handy feature. Although if you only have two people in the car, you can use that. But if you have four people in the car, obviously you can't have that installed because it covers the back seats. How much will a Beetle set you back? Well, they start just under $26,000 and they end just over $32,000. Now the turbo diesel model slots somewhere in between those two price points with a fully loaded 2.0T right at the top. And of course the base model with the 2.5 liter engine right down at the bottom. Now that 60s model is the most expensive edition of the Volkswagen Beetle and it's going to be right in that $30,000 to $32,000 range. That brings the question of is it worth it and what's my final word on the Beetle convertible? If it's worth it to you uh, for the styling, then go ahead and get one. However, I, I can't help but thinking that the Volkswagen EOS is a much more practical convertible. I think I look like the looks of it a little bit more than the Beetle convertible. Uh, even though Beetle's, uh, you know, getting a little bit butcher these days, uh, it's still not exactly the most manly or masculine car. Not to say that the EOS necessarily is, but of course it's a lot more, um, you know, angular, more interesting looking in its latest edition. It also has that hard top roof, which I find a lot more practical. It's a lot quieter inside, a little bit stiffer uh, in terms of the chassis and driving dynamics than this Beetle convertible. But if you're taller, then you'll actually fit better in this Beetle convertible than you will in the EOS because its uh, hard top roof does have kind of a low roof line. So my final word is if you're after a Beetle convertible, which is pretty much why you're watching this video, I'm sure, then go ahead and buy one if you like one. If you like the way that it looks, if you like the way that it drives and that's okay with you, then just go ahead and buy one. There really isn't anything to compare this vehicle with or, you know, that really competes with it. There's, there's no PT Cruiser convertible anymore because the PT Cruiser is dead. So there's really nothing out there that's kind of cute, kind of retro, kind of fun looking and fairly inexpensive with a rag top. That's been our quick take at the 2013 Beetle Convertible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube feed, like us on Facebook, go check out our website at thetruthaboutcars.com. And if you uh, wanna send us some tips or suggestions or other vehicles that you'd like us to review, then go ahead and click over to thetruthaboutcars.com, click on that contact us link and let us know.